for our country's uh, and people's transformation from where we are to another level where I want to be, a number of things have to come into play. Even if when you talk about leadership, you are leading people to do something. So leadership is as important as the people led. In other words, I want to bring these people we are talking about to the forefront. What do we do with these people? How do we invest in them? And how do we invest with them? So that they are part and parcel of the any effort that we put forward through different policy frameworks that we create and think that are going to work, or even with this leadership that we want to call upon to bring about results. But let me also thank the people who have been behind these efforts to create this platform, which brings together almost all of the stakeholders in this, which is governments, business leaders, uh, and, and others that can play that role to, for, for us to be able to move forward. Now, we, you've talked about bringing the rest of the world to Africa. That is, is very important, that, and, and we bring the rest of the world to Africa in different ways, but we are looking at investments in different areas that we enable that transformation of our continent to happen. And one major and critical entry point is the agriculture that we, we are talking about today, for which you have different frameworks and efforts that have been going on whether through CADEP and now uh, Grow Africa that really reinforces it in a special way and that brings in uh, the kinds of investments that we, 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 we seek to have again to move forward. Now, there are a number of players that have to play a critical role. Government and donors development partners have their own way of making available the resources necessary. That's good. Donor government money is good. Private sector money is better. When these two come together, it's excellent. So we have to continue to work together, therefore, to make sure that these resources are found and they are brought to bear on the programs and the different policy frameworks that have been put in place for us to be able to move fo forward. And as we realized, the best entry po point for the transformation of Africa to fight poverty and create wealth is through agriculture because of the impact it has directly on millions of African families and the people, directly. You can see it if everything is done right, you see the benefit in a very short time. And that's what has happened with the success, story, success stories you have had in the different countries of, of Africa, in Tanzania, in Ethiopia, in many other places beginning to show that this can happen. So with improved lives through these activities and through agriculture mainly, and empowering so many people across the continent, I think there is no better way of uh, winning our people off aid so that they can be self-sufficient in many ways, whether you talk about food security, it's about nutrition, it's more about wealth creation. It empowers people to the point that uh, they don't have to be dependent all the time. You can be dependent for some time, but not forever. 
on the rest of the world. And that is speaking to the issue of the youth. Uh, I think nothing is going to happen of all these things we are talking about uh, without people having to think through it and do something about it. But nothing should be taken for granted, which means there has got to be a lot of other work to be done. For the youth, even with all the problems our countries face, I think there is um, a level of political engagement that has to be done uh, to add to what President Kikwete was saying. If the youth are looking elsewhere other than, say, in agriculture, it's like they, it would happen in any other sector, maybe. So the level of mobilization and engagement, as we do for the whole population, to have them participate in all these activities, we have to be sensitive to some of these segments of our society and therefore try and do mobilization, cut out demonstrations of what, to show what we mean that would benefit them, that would also benefit the country, and also create certain incentives as we do that. In fact, as we talk about the youth, again, some of the things, earlier on somebody talked about women, the women involvement, women is involvement in this. It, it becomes logical that women will have to be involved for various reasons, not only for their numbers which were mentioned earlier, but it's also simply that it's, it is their right and they are part of the society anyway we are living in and have to manage all together without saying this is for women, this is for men, and this is for, sometimes we have to integrate this. So the youth are like in some of our countries. In fact, we have, uh, some people think it's a problem, maybe it is a challenge but it carries with it a very huge opportunity. If you find the under 25, in our country are about 67% of our population, immediately it hits you like a big problem. Well, it is a big challenge, <laughs> but it is actually a huge, it's more of an opportunity than a challenge. But you have, we have got to invest in them again with them and also not leave things you know, for, for, to be taken for granted, but to mobilize them. And as we do it in one country, if there are success stories to talk about, then it should cross borders. We should share experiences as uh, the person who raised the question was talking about. And I think with this sharing of experiences, with opportunities available that we can support and in a coordinated way and in a way of mobilizing them to really be, to have an entrepreneurial mind and be problem solvers, I think the challenges that are there can be addressed and, and we, we can reap a lot from a big, uh, population that is, is, is still very young.